Hi, this is Pastor Ken from Vineyard of Hope in Osawatomie, Kansas. My prayer for you today is that God would touch your heart in a real and tangible way for a breakthrough in your life as you hear this message. Thank you for watching, and I want to give you a personal invitation to come and see what we're all about. The church information is at the end of this video. Now I hope you enjoy this message. God bless. I feel almost like the lady that had an accident and she jumped out of the car and she said, when are you people going to learn to drive? You're the third one I hit today. <laughs> Will you turn with us to John's Gospel chapter 18? I read out of the King James, but I've read out of the NIV and they read out almost identical. So since I'm familiar where this page is in the King James, I'll read it. But in John's Gospel, in Luke's Gospel, in Matthew's Gospel, and in Mark's Gospel, you'll find this message that I plan on delivering with God's help. But in the book of John, chapter 18 is the only place that this man's name is mentioned in this story. His name is Malchus. Does anybody know who he is? I didn't think so, but I didn't either. But when we get through, maybe we will know a little bit about this man. But I believe when uh, a story is recorded over in the scripture many times that there's an important factor in that story. So we're going to read it out of the book of John, chapter 18. And it uh, uh, follows right after when uh, Jesus was preparing to go to the cross. And he was having the Last Supper and then and starting with verse 1. It says, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kedron, where was a garden, and to the which he entered, and his disciples. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oft times resorted hither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and so officers from the chief priest, and Pharisees cometh hither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus therefore, knowing all things that should come to, unto him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon as then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then answered, ask, <coughs> then asked he them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way that the saying might be fulfilled which he spoke of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest and cut off his ear. And the servant's name was Malchus. Think of that. <laughs> In most of these stories, it said he stretched out his hand, he drew his sword, he struck the high priest and smote off his ear through the sword. Life is filled with shocks and surprises, pitfalls and dangers. Every one of us have been there. All of us have been bruised and wounded by someone how many of you have been, ever been bruised or wounded by someone? Okay, and all of us have wounded and bruised and offended someone else. How many times have you offended somebody else? Oh, I know, not me. I have never done that. I would never do that. But James tells us if any man offend not in word, the same as a perfect or a, a mature man. 
and able also to bridle his whole body, James 3 and 2. So I say, have you ever offended somebody with your mouth? Have you ever said something and said, oh, I wish I hadn't said that? We say it like this. I opened my mouth, inserted my foot. <laughs> yep. You know, I knew I shouldn't, but I did. And we offended a lot of people. <coughs> Just yesterday, I was going through a, a business store and I asked this lady and I was being nosy because I worked with this lady and uh, I got the uh, mail and, and her, her name was on there that she wasn't going to be at work, this one wasn't going to be at work, and they named about 10 people and they said, we won't be there, they're going to be gone, and I was nosy. They didn't say where they was going. I wanted to know where they were going. They didn't invite me to go anywhere. So I saw this lady and I said, uh, by the way, where, where are you going? What, here you're not going to be there. She said, I didn't put my name down there. Somebody else put my name down there. I ain't going anywhere. And I thought, I don't think I have a happy camper here. <laughs> I think something is wrong. And I said, well, I'm being nosy. I want to know where they're going. And she was halfway out the door and she rattled off there somewhere. I thought, I don't know where that is. And I thought, you know, it's really none of my business. But if I didn't know that lady and, and knew her from back here, she's always saying things she shouldn't say and the tone she shouldn't say. And uh, it would have offended me. And then I thought, I wonder how many times have I offended someone? I know, maybe once. <laughs> but this man, Malchus, went to a prayer meeting. People often go to a prayer meeting for different reasons. I ask the question, why do you go to a prayer meeting or do you go? If you say, no, I don't go, then I ask you, why don't you go? And then I say before you answer, you should go. And I believe that. I believe that we, are, uh, we should go to the prayer meetings. They're important. So I'm going to just give you some reasons why people go to uh, the prayer meetings. Some go to worship God in spirit and in truth. <coughs> some go for social status. Well, I went to church. I went to prayer meeting tonight. Some go to find fault. I'm going to see if they do it right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you know I was preaching this morning. Maybe some of you are here to say, I wonder how she's going to do it. If she's going to do it like Brother Ken, I assure you, no, I'm not. I thought, oh, if I could just step up on the altar, up on the... I knew I'd fall flat. So I thought, I'm not going to try that. Will you help me? Yeah, you'd probably help me up, too. Help me down. I love this boy, but there's something that tells me... I like a little bit of trust when it comes to stuff like that. <laughs> Besides that, I, I'm heavier than you think, Tyler. <laughs> but anyway, uh, some do. They just come and uh, I'll see what they do wrong today and, and just pick faults, okay? Some come to find out if our doctrine will agree with theirs. I just hate it when somebody would come into my office and ask a question, and I'd give them an answer, and they said, well, uh, I'll go ask Pastor Jones at the Baptist Church down there at Garnett, because uh, they wanted somebody that would agree with them to tell them they were right. And if you don't agree with them, then they go until they find somebody that says, yeah, I agree with you. So uh, they come for different reasons. Some come out of duty. Well, and I've, I've been there. You know, being pastor, I went a lot of times I didn't want to go. But because of duty and the paycheck, I thought, should go. Yeah. Some people come for food and afterglow. I've got friends that they would go any place, a, a church supper, 
an afterglow. They would go to a funeral. If there was going to be a funeral dinner, they would show up whether they knew the person or not. So people come where there's food. Some people come to church. We had an army colonel that would come in the wintertime because we had heat in the church. He would come in the summertime because he didn't want to turn his AC on. So he'd come over and use ours. And we had an outside hydrant. And he'd also water his great big dog from our outside hydrant because it, the expense was on us. Some people come to prayer meetings to keep the pastor off their back. How come you went to church yesterday? Were you sick? No. So we better go to keep the pastor off our back. <laughs> Judas came to betray Jesus. He came to betray him with a kiss and for 30 pieces of silver. Did you ever miss a service and ask somebody, how did the service go yesterday? And they said, oh, you should have been there. The most exciting things happen. They always happen when you're gone. <laughs> you miss it. Exciting things happen at this prayer meeting. I want you to get it. Here was a man that came and he was betraying the Lord with a kiss. He was being his friend. Jesus said friend, called him friend one time. And Ju Judas kissed him on the cheek. And then collected 30 pieces of silver. He betrayed the Lord. Then we find this man Malchus came and he found Jesus, but not to worship him, but to take him away and put him to death. As they arrived at the prayer meeting, they found just a handful of people. Sunday morning we have good service, Sunday night we have less in attendance, Wednesday night we even have less in attendance. And prayer, we call a prayer meeting and we have less than that. So we find in Matthew 26 that there was the sum of four people. Peter, James and, son, and John, the two sons of thunder, and Jesus. What a prayer meeting. The first shocker was when they come to Jesus and ask for Jesus, Jesus said, whom seek ye? Whom seek ye? Who do you want? And Jesus, they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said, I am he. The man fell backwards. They fell to the ground. This was unusual. No one would admit that they, because they, uh, they knew the officers who they were hunting, they knew the unmercifulness, beatings, and the crucifixion, and they would have said, not me, he went that way. Now, if I knew somebody was going to come and arrest me and kill me and they asked for me, I don't know whether I would have said, yep, I'm Judy Brown or not. I'd like to say, she's Judy Brown, not me. Or She was here, but she went that way. You don't know what she'll do. But Jesus said, and they asked him again. Jesus said, who do you seek? And they said, we seek Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. People are shocked when Jesus answers their prayer. I am He. How many times have you prayed earnestly and you believed Jesus was going to answer that prayer? You knew He would because the scripture says if we believe and we ask Him anything, 
in his name, in his will, he will answer that prayer. How many of you believe that? How many of you have prayed earnestly for something and Jesus answered your prayer? And you said, oh my gosh, he answered that prayer. You were so shocked. You were just dumbfounded, shocked that God answered your prayer. Why is that? When the supernatural comes down and ministers to the natural, the human part, the fleshly part, we're always taken by surprise. I mean, it's, it's, it's just awesome to think that God, our creator, would come down and minister to us. I like the scripture that Jesus said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. I've been a, a, a lot of things uh, and uh, been able to do a lot of things. Uh, I was good in sports. I was good, I wasn't good in books. And, uh, but I, I was good in a lot of things. And when we chose up teams, I was chosen. It was a wonderful thing. And you have somebody over here and they couldn't play ball, they couldn't run, they couldn't jump, they couldn't do anything. And they said, I'll take them. You know. It was my choice. I had to take them because sitting over there. Gone off subject, but it comes to my mind. We had seven kids they were taken away from their parents and, and this one couple, they, they wanted these two and they wanted these two and, and uh, the other couple wanted one. And they got the one and they looked over and they saw the boy uh, and he was, he was really, uh, he was an ugly boy. Good boy, but he, he wasn't anything to look at. And the, this lady said, he looks like a drowned rat. I think I'll take him too. My husband will kill me when I get home, but I'm going to take him home. I can't stand the thought of him sitting there. And she took him home. And a few years ago, I saw that kid, and now he stands up about six foot tall, and I don't know, probably weighs 230, 40 pounds. Nice looking <laughs> chap. And preaches the gospel, and I thought, if that woman only knew the value. But a lot of times we're like that. We'll just take them. And we say, well, God just took me because he, he felt sorry for me. No, God chose us. He chose you. He called you. And so when Jesus answers our prayer, we're, we're just shocked. We're amazed. We are shocked when Jesus shows up. You ever come to church and you say, well, I hope God does something tonight. We don't have service as usual. And all at once, Tyler and the, the music, they just start to sing and then it's the same old stuff. Just And all at once, you get a tingling from head to toe. Things begin to move in your heart and your life. And all at once, Jesus just shows up. Yeah. And you're just shocked. You're amazed, you're overwhelmed because Jesus shows up in Oswami Vineyard of Hope. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell you, if he don't show up, we just might as well close shop and go home. Because there's not a man or a woman preacher, either one, that can bless you if Jesus don't show up. So we're shocked when Jesus answers prayer. We're shocked when he shows up and we're really shocked when he reveals himself and said, I am he. Yeah. And that's what he wants to do, reveal himself to show us that he is God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. As the officer stood gazing upon Jesus, tending business as usual, all at once, and there was a sting. And the officer grabbed his head, and the blood began to ooze. 
And he said, my ear is gone. Think of that. Think of that. The sting. The shock. What a blow at the place of prayer. When I met Jesus, if only I'd have been prepared, I could have done something myself. When do blows come to you? When you least expect it. I've been a good fighter, and I know when to put up my dukes. <laughs> yeah. I was challenged the other day by a junior in high school. Oh, I wanted to fight so bad. <laughs> <laughs> the nerve of that kid. Didn't even come up to my head, just come there. I'll handle you, she said. I said, did you take wrestling in school? She said, no, but my boyfriend did. And I said, oh, he's nothing. He's a wimp. <laughs> he wasn't with her. <laughs> but I really was chomping at the bits. And I thought, you know, I better stop and think. I'm not what I used to be. <laughs> And I'd hate for somebody to pick me up off a wall, uh, price shopper floor because a 16, 17 year old kid just knocked me flat. So I thought, you know, I gained a little knowledge. But when we least expect it, when we're unprepared for it, and often after great victories, after Jesus comes upon the scene, he answers your prayer and he reveals himself to you, then you better watch out. The devil will strike you. We're amazed. Now notice this man, he came to the prayer meeting. He met Jesus. Jesus answered his prayer, I am he. Jesus revealed himself to him and then he lost an ear over it. I want to ask you another question. Where do these blows come from? From those you least expect. Often from your friends. And from those of your own household. You never expect it. But when you have a great experience with the Lord and often when you go home and you want to tell your, your friends, your people in your household, that's when the blows come. Those that we love the most, we hurt the most. Zechariah 13 and 6 says, And one shall say unto Jesus, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer, those with which I have been wounded in the house of my friends. Those in the house of God will wound you. Wow. We've all been there. We've all been wounded. And we've also wounded other people. Those attending the prayer meeting. Oh, not those. Those whom Jesus teaches. Those who profess to be followers of Christ. Christians. Those saved, sanctified, baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now I ask another question. What are our reactions to these wounds? 
We can't always help what happens to us, but we can help how we react. We have a choice. If only they would apologize. Peter said words like this, apologize nothing. I just intended to wound him. I didn't intend to destroy or kill him or to behead him. He said, I'd never do a thing like that. Note in the scripture, Peter did not apologize. Peter did did not acknowledge his wrong. Peter did not even offer to take him to the doctor. Oh my goodness, I cut off his ear. I better take that man to the doctor. He ignored him. He ignored the bleeding. He ignored the sting. He endured the shock and the loss. This is good but Jesus. A lot of us are here, but Jesus. I love the Bible when it says, but God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But God. Man can't, but God can. Man won't, but God will. I can't, but God. Oh, what a wonderful message there. But Jesus saw, and he knows all. Did you ever, uh, it scares me when, when I think we're being recorded. I wanted to tell Pastor Brenda, don't record this service. I'm not interested in being recorded. I don't think I'm picture material. Just Can we fake it? Can we put somebody else up here or something? But everything that we do in the house of God and outside of the house of God, God is recording. He sees all. Somebody said, well, God didn't see that. Yes, he did. Well, if God knew, I wouldn't have said that. He knows, my friend. He knows what you can't even see down here. Yeah, yeah. That's good. You think, oh, I, I, I'm pretty good. I, I check my heart. Everything's okay. But you ask the Lord, Lord, what is there? And it's amazing what he can pull out. If I ask a friend, what, what do you think I've got in my heart? And they tell me, I say, oh, no, I don't, I don't think that's true. But when you begin to argue with God you're not going to get the first base. (laughs) You're not. God knows. God sees all. Okay? Amen. Yes, He does. But God saw, Jesus saw, and He knows all. And Jesus touched. He touches when we least expect it. He touches before we even ask him to touch. Milk is, as far as I know, he wasn't a praying man. But Jesus touched him and healed him. So Jesus saw, he touched, and he healed. Now will you go with me in your imagination to Malchus' home? He walks in the front door and he has blood on his tunic and his wife says, Honey, what is that on your tunic? Oh, that's blood. Blood? From what? Where you been? Well... Some fellows and I went to the prayer meeting and one of those Jesus boys cut off my ear. Oh, I don't believe that. 
they don't do things like that. I've heard a lot of good things about those people that go to Vineyard of Hope. They just would not do a thing like that. This one did. Let me see your head. Your ear is there. Well, Jesus saw it. Jesus touched it. And Jesus healed it. Let me see it again. Which ear was it? She looked at this one. And she looked at that one. And she said, honey, you don't even have a scar. When God does something, he does it right. Yeah. You don't even have a scar. Amen. Pastor Carolyn and I pastored together. If I'd reach out and say, Carolyn, she'd have a bruise three inches in diameter on her shoulder. Like I'd beat her. I fell down a hole a line of stairs and I hit boom, 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 every one of them and I never even had a bruise to show it. That used to make me so irritated. I said, here, I just poke you and you look like you've been beat. I fall down a flight of stairs and I never even get a bruise. I wanted something to show for it. <laughs> One day I didn't get something to show for it. We won't go there. Yes, I will. We was painting the church and I had a great big knot like a grapefruit on the back of my tailbone. That afternoon I had an appointment with a dentist and oh, it takes God to move me to the dentist. And I sat in his chair, about gave him a heart attack, and I said, I am so glad to be in your office this morning. I am so glad to be at the dentist today. And he asked why, and I says, because my back end hurt so bad from falling downstairs, and I thought if you worked up here, then my back end wouldn't hurt so bad. And he worked, and then I heard on both ends. <laughs> Many people, and perhaps I'm talking to some, are wounded and are still bleeding and are dying. There are ministers that are waiting for churches to recognize their wrongs, to apologize for their errors waiting for church boards, waiting for the congregation, the troublemakers that have wronged pastors, and there are a lot of them, let me tell you. Pastors have wronged individuals. They have wronged congregations. Their individual Christians are waiting for apologies. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. They are sinners that are waiting for Christians to make wrongs right. Everyone has wronged, wounded, offended someone. Everyone has been wounded, wronged, and offended by someone. People today are still dying in their own self-pity. My message, if you hear nothing else today, is come to Jesus. He sees, he touches, and he heals. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. It doesn't matter how you come. You can walk, you can run, you can crawl, you can be carried, but just come to Jesus. Yes. For he sees, he knows, he will touch you and he will heal you and he'll leave no scar. Amen. 
Yes. Psalm 147, 3 says, He healed the brokenhearted and heart and bindeth up the wounds or their griefs. Luke 4, 18 and 19 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, to recovering of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I say amen and come to Jesus. He's waiting for you. Friend, we've all been wounded. You will be wounded again, and there's only one place for you to go. You don't run to Pastor Ken. You don't run to Pastor Brenda, but run to Jesus. Yes, that's right. Now, we expect the world to bruise us and to wound us, but you're go I'm going to wound some of you. There's something wrong with me if I say, Let's see, who can I wound today? And I, my purpose to live today is to wound two or three people that go to that church. Then there's something wrong with me. Yeah. I need to pray through. But sometimes we just, maybe we don't look at you, or maybe we, we've got our own problems and we're encased in it, and we ignore you, or we say the wrong thing, or we do the wrong thing, and you have, that offends you, because you're not having a good day either. And life just happens, and you're shocked, because they happen in the house of God, in the house of prayer. Where are you going to go? There is no place for you to go except to Jesus. Yeah. And if you think you've got it bad, just read the next chapter that I, I didn't read when Jesus went to the cross. When I get feeling sorry for myself, then I think, Lord, you know all about this. You were forsaken. Your disciples took their tails and run. They all fled. His family didn't stand beside him. The church didn't stand beside him. He did great things in the community. And because a few hogs went and drowned, they said, prayed him out. And if it happened to him, who makes you better than he? Come on. So where are you going to go? You go to Jesus. Why? Because he understands. And you won't need more than understanding. He can heal you. You ask me how he does it. I don't know. I don't care. All I want to know is he's able and he's willing and he'll do it. So I close with a challenge. If you're hurting this morning in any way, whether it's offense or you offended or whether you're hurting physically or mentally or unrest, Come to Jesus. For he sees. And he'll touch you. And he will heal you. Will you come? Will you come to Jesus? Father, we just pray this morning that the words would strike home to our hearts. And as you see this congregation, you know the mind, the thoughts, the hurts, the hang-ups. We ask, ask, Lord, if we turn our eyes upon you, that the things of this earth will grow strangely dim, and that we would find healing as we look into your divine eyes and your presence. May we heed to the invitation to come, to come just as we are. We come unto you. We ask this in your name and for your glory. Amen. If you want special prayer this morning, we ask you to come.